And welcome to Connect, our daily meditation where we connect to God, each other, and our own inner selves. Now we read in the Bible that it's good to meditate on the Word of God. So find a comfortable place and inhale slowly. Breathe in peace. Exhale. Drive out worries, anxiety, stress, and fear. Our Bible reading today is out of Ephesians 4, verse 30, and I'm going to read out of the message. Don't grieve God. Don't break His heart. His Holy Spirit, moving and breathing in you, is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for Himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Now, many, many years ago, the throne of Russia was occupied by two princes. And they sat side by side and they gave their decisions on matters that were brought to them. And their judgments were amazingly wise and just. And the people were just bamboozled that princes that so young and so inexperienced could know so much of statesmanship and politics and so on and so forth. But the secret was that close behind the throne where they sat, hidden by a thin veil, was Princess Sophia. She heard the cases brought to them and gave the decisions which they then spoke out. And those boys referred everything to her and waited until she whispered to them the wise answer that they delivered. As born-again believers, my friends, we are to refer every matter to the Holy Spirit and wait for His decision. Then what He tells us to do, we are to do. When you are born again, the Holy Spirit of God enters your life and seals you with a spirit of adoption. He painted the blood of Jesus on the lentils of your heart. And without that, you'd still be lost, without eternal life, outside the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus died for you, and that's awesome. That's awesome. But before you came to believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God was hovering over your heart that was blackened by sin. And then the Holy Spirit spoke light into your heart. And that's how it happened. And at that point, He gave you faith. He opened your eyes to see. You were enlightened by the Holy Spirit of God and you were able to see Jesus and believe in Jesus and you were justified by faith, forgiven, adopted, all of that by the power of the Holy Spirit. You were sealed for the day of redemption. And so, as a born-again Christian, you are now in a relationship with the Spirit of God and relationships are personal. And so, you can grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And you know what? If I do not love you, you cannot grieve me. You can hurt me, you can make me angry, but you can't grieve me. Grief is a very, very sad word. It's like rupturing your world, torn it apart. And the Holy Spirit is like, what are you doing? How could you do this to me after I've done all these things for you? How could you do these things to me? And my friend, only a child of God can grieve the Holy Spirit. And that is the really sad part of it. And the word grief comes from the word lupe, 
which would normally be used to picture a husband or wife who has discovered his or her might has been unfaithful. And that as a result of this unfaithfulness, the betrayed spouse is shocked, devastated, hurt, wounded, and grieved because of the pain that accompanies unfaithfulness. And this tells us, first of all, that the relationship that exists between us and the Holy Spirit is priceless. The Holy Spirit is deeply in love with us and wants to be close to us. But when we act like the world and talk like the world and behave like the world and dress like the world and respond the same way the world does, then we cause the Holy Spirit of God to feel shock and hurt and grief. And the Holy Spirit convicted us of sin and brought us to Jesus. And then He indwelled us and He sanctified us and He empowered us and He faithfully remains alongside us to help us, to empower us, to encourage us, to comfort us. So when we deliberately then enter into sin, it grieves the Holy Spirit, really grieves the Holy Spirit. Just as a husband or wife would feel who has just discovered that his or her partner has committed adultery. That's gutting. And the Holy Spirit is shocked when we dishonor His presence in our lives. One scholar has translated Ephesians 4 verse 30 as stop deeply wounding and causing such extreme emotional pain to the Spirit of God, by whom you have been sealed until the day of redemption. Now, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you won't lose your salvation, okay? But there are a number of things that will happen to you according to what one, one um, preacher called Spurgeons. For instance, you will lose all sense of the Holy Spirit's presence. You won't experience words of comfort, peace or love. You will basically just lose your joy as a Christian. The light will be taken from you and you'll stumble in darkness. Your soul will be no longer like a watered garden but like a barren, bleak wilderness. That's it. Grieve the Spirit of God and you lose all power. If you pray, it will be a very weak prayer. When you read the Bible, you won't see the great burning truths there. You will not bound up like an eagle or run and not grow weary. You will feel like Samson when the Holy Spirit left him, lost, weak, blinded, and captive. Your assurance will be gone. Doubts and depression will reign in your life. And when the church grieved the Holy Spirit, then they will not be a blessing to the community because they will not be able to cast light into the surrounding darkness. Sinners won't be saved by the words and few people will be added to the church. And that means that we are in a miserable state then, isn't it? We used to dance like David before the ark, and now we sit like Job in the ash pit and scrape our ulcers with a pot shirt. There was a time when the spirit scandal shone in the church, but now that we grieved him, we have lost our spiritual power. Once we could do all things, now we can do nothing. We might as well be at home. The light, joy, comfort and spiritual power all are gone and it's a sad thing to lose the Spirit, to grieve the Holy Spirit. So let us humble ourselves before God, let us confess our sins, let us cry out to Jesus that He will heal us, that He will visit His church, that He will pour out His Holy Spirit on us and fill us to overflow. Remove our sins 
and heal our land. Amen. Please pray with me. Father God, thank you for your spirit. And Holy Spirit, thank you for all the work that you are doing within me. I confess the times that I've sinned and grieved you by my thoughts, my actions and my words. Empower me to listen to your help and guidance and apply the word of God deep within my life. Amen. Amen.